I want to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. First Nations peoples have the oldest continuing cultures on earth and are the world's most successful environmental custodians. They've managed land and sea country for 65,000 years. And as the Minister for Environment and Water, I'm committed to learning from this remarkable example. Thank you so much to the Press Club for having me here today. I want to acknowledge the report's three lead authors who join us today, Professor Emma Johnson, Dr Terry Janke and Dr Ian Creswell. I also... <laughs> I also want to acknowledge the Chief Scientist, Professor Ian Chubb, and my parliamentary colleagues, Michelle Rowland, Senator Pocock, and my old friend, Chris Hayes, who's come back to Canberra today. It's been just six weeks since I started in this portfolio, and on top of the usual mountain of departmental briefings, I've used these six weeks to travel to some of the most remarkable parts of Australia, reminding me again how grateful I am to live in the most beautiful country on earth and how thankful I am to the generations of activists and good governments who have protected our unique national, natural and cultural heritage. But there's another story here too, a difficult, confronting and sometimes depressing story. At the same time as I've been seeing some of the most beautiful places on earth, I've been reading the data that tells me that these places are under threat. If we continue on the trajectory that we are on, the precious places, landscapes, animals and plants that we think of when we think of home may not be here for our kids and grandkids. Today, as part of my statutory duty as Minister, I am publicly releasing the 2021 State of the Environment Report. It's one of the most important documents in environmental science. Every five years, a group of independent experts, some of Australia's most respected scientists, a number of whom are with us here today, are given access to the best available tools. They're told to show us the full national picture of the health of our environment. Or as one of the authors put it, take a good hard look at ourselves. This report was delivered to the government last year. The previous minister, Susan Lay, received it before Christmas, but chose to keep it hidden, locked away until after the federal election. And when you read it, you'll know why. But while it's a confronting read, Australians deserve the truth. We deserve to know that Australia has lost more mammal species to extinction than any other continent. We deserve to know that threatened communities have grown by 20% in the last five years, with places literally burned into endangerment by catastrophic fires. We need to know that the Murray-Darling fell to its lowest water level on record in 2019, and that for the first time, Australia now has more foreign plant species than native ones. Individually, every one of these revelations is dreadful, but it's only when you think about the cumulative impact that you begin to get the full picture of environmental decline. It's right there on page one of the report. I quote, Overall, the state and trend of the environment in Australia are poor and deteriorating, with abrupt changes in ecological systems being recorded in the past five years. And it's downhill from there. Since the last report, marine heat waves have caused mass coral bleaching in the Great Barrier Reef. Warming temperatures have reduced kelp beds along the southeast coast, as well as threatening reef habitats and the abalone and lobster industries that they support. At the same time, Australia is experiencing a plague of marine plastics. 
In Perth, scientists have found up to 60,000 pieces of plastic per square kilometre of water. In Brisbane, they found between 40,000 and 80,000. At the top end, in the Torres Strait and Timor Sea, abandoned fishing gear has been killing marine animals on an industrial scale. These underwater hurricanes of debris are known as ghost nets, and they're strangling up to 14,000 turtles a year, turtles which are listed as threatened. Our waters are struggling, and so is the land, as a result of erosion, deforestation, intensive agriculture and climate change, Australia's soil is now generally in poor condition and it's getting worse. We're losing topsoil, letting it blow away without vegetation to protect it, making our soil less productive, less fertile and less efficient in holding water, which means our agricultural output is lower than it could be. Our land is more susceptible to drought and our soil's ability to regenerate and support life is diminished. Australia is one of the world's deforestation hotspots. Between the year 2000 and 2017, Australia cleared over 7.7 .7 million hectares of threatened species habitat across the country. That's an area bigger than Tasmania. Much of this clearing occurred in small increments. In fact, more than 90% of it was never assessed under our environmental laws. When we destroy these habitats and when we don't restore them elsewhere, endangered creatures lose their homes and that has consequences. In February this year, koalas were officially moved from threatened to endangered in Queensland, New South Wales and the ACT. These drowsy creatures have grazed on Australian eucalypt for more than 25 million years, and it's only this year of all years that they've become endangered. Of course, this disturbing list is made worse by climate change. Global warming multiplies environmental pressures everywhere. It heats our oceans, it deepens droughts, it intensifies disease, it destroys habitats, and it worsens extreme weather events, which tilt the balance of ecosystems beyond recognition. The bushfires of 2019 and 2020 are still being felt today. Those bushfires were an ecological bomb ripping through southeastern Australia. They killed or displaced up to three billion creatures. They burnt over 80% of the Greater Blue Mountains area, almost 60% of our Gondwana rainforests and more than 40% of the Stirling Range National Park. And they tipped clouds of sediment and ash into our waterways, leading to mass marine deaths. That summer was terrifying for anyone who lived through it. And if we don't act, those awful red nights will become more common.